Well, hello, everybody. This is Mickey Clayton, the coach, and I'm here today to bring you some information as we talk about basketball in Tallahassee. To be real honest to you, basketball in Tallahassee has really been all of that. It's been exciting. It's been some teams that everybody thought was really going to do well. They didn't. Some that you know traditionally are doing good, and they were. But there were also some surprise teams. Even here tonight, we have three of the boys' teams playing in the regional finals. We actually have three that have already qualified to be in the state tournament. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I first have to go back to last week. Uh, we just got done playing with the girls out of out of uh, Maryland. They did their thing. The girls from Family High qualified. They went to the state. They didn't win, but they went. That in itself was a surprise with the rebuilding year that Erica Cromarty had. She had a transfer from Ricketts that really played exceptionally well for. And early in the season, we thought that was going to be a program and a team that they were going to be pretty hard to beat when it came time to get there. You had Lincoln High that had two injuries okay. early in the Aaron season Terrell, with young ladies that were two. starting, and they ended up never missing a beat. They got My to the regional Ryan finals, went to Jacksonville, and lost by one. It's funny. Right? That's Terrell, that's the Terrell, route you have to go. This panhandle now, the way it goes, you have to be able to get from here through Jacksonville, and Jacksonville has to get through Tallahassee. So that ended up being a really good game. It was a one-point game. Ricketts overcame a lot of adversity, lost some players, but they had nine seniors that went to battle for Coach Sharia Davis. They never fully recovered from the Nia Lee and the knee injury that she had her junior year, but the team really, really galvanized itself and played well. And then even in the semifinal game, Godby High School, who Ricketts has been manhandling, they didn't manhandle them. Chelsea Johnson had them playing hard. They did a good job, and it was actually was a battle there. I think they won by, they being Rickards, won by about five points, which is a lot closer than it's traditionally been. Then you had Lincoln High, who lost one of the twins, and in the absence of her sister, boy, she went on a run. She had a run in Atlanta, which went for 50 and 63 it was just incredible performance by the Terrell twins. Just through the year, Coach Rod Mack had them still one game away from getting to the state. So you had Rickards, you had uh, Florida High, and you had Lincoln girls all make it to the finals. Congratulations. That, that, was, that was pretty good there to be able to get that close. And the girls' basketball team just traditionally has been the one that everybody thought this year would be the girls' year. <laughs> Not completely, because those boys' teams, we'll see how it goes. Already we got three going to the state. Already. It's three that's going to the state. You already have Madison. You got John Paul II. And you got Crossroads. Some of them making their first appearances going. Coach Dante Guinea. From Crossroads over there in Quincy, if it was a way to go to the state, that's how they did it. I mean, they scored the last second. It was like 0 0.1 seconds, ball inside. All, great defense because he caught the pass underneath the backboard. It wasn't even a shot. The backboard blocked his shot. Then he was able to rebound it, put it in, and score. They went berserk at Crossroads to be able to win that game and go to the state. Then you had John Paul with transfers from Rickards with a young man, John Paul, that we had hoped would get eligible last year. Having some adversity on his island and the hurricane and getting all his paperwork together, he was able to go to John Paul and average a double-double at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, college alert. Can do a little bit of everything. Then they had a transfer from Godby, McElwin, who shoots the ball as a sophomore. We always like him, even at Godby. Look for them. To make some noise. I would not be surprised. If we got a state championship. Out of the three. Between Madison. Crossroads. And John Paul II. 
I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we got two state championships out of it. I really wouldn't. But we'll see because those games get ready to get started. And we have a moment. We got a little minute here where we had a chance to talk to Coach uh, Dent. If you ask me, I think we had uh, more bodies than the, uh, than the opposing team. So that, that, that was that was big time for us. Made it, made it look like it was a home, home game for us. Real quickly, you got to get ready for the state now. What do, you, what do you have to say or what do you want to say to the Madison County fans as you get ready to go to Lakeland? Uh, we, they remember last year. I, if I ask for one thing, I, I would like to you know, ask that they don't take game for um, lightly and, and come down that first day. Uh, nothing is guaranteed. Uh, show up, support the team. That, you know, Over in Madison County, he played at Hawthorne. And if you're old man like me, back before the days of integration when all the black high schools played you talk to somebody over about those games they were something and it was like that over in hawthorne went up about four or five rows in the beaches and didn't go much further than that. and in there an hour before game you couldn't get in the tree. then you have a situation where they actually take the four corners on the floor and they sell standing room only, and it was standing room only. You go in there, they charge it for parking. They said the only reason they charged parking because when they went to Madison the previous year, they charged them for parking. Boy, it was an absolute great atmosphere for basketball. It was great, but I'm an old man, so it just threw back to me how everybody was there, knew everybody, they're on everybody, yelling and screaming immediately after the game. They did what? The deputy sheriffs from Madison County were on the floor and, and they rushed those guys into a locker room for them to change. Congratulations. It's been a heck of a year for basketball. But tonight, let's not get it twisted. You got Lincoln, who cut some guys, or guys who didn't make their team, and they went on to be big contributors at the high school they went to. You know what? They didn't need them. They didn't need them. They averaged 20 points a game. I mean, I'm sorry, they, they had 20 wins this season, and they absolutely rolled. And they won their last 11 in a row. They got a regional finals going on tonight. Then you have another one with Rickards over in Jacksonville. When we saw them early, they had lost so many players. We didn't know that Eli Bryant and Avery Curry had reloaded like they did with a couple of transfers, one from, from Lincoln, one from Jones High. Then we had the football transfer who got after people, which what we saw early in the season was how they played defense even better than what we saw them play last year. And we liked their length and their athleticism and their heart. And we told people very early that they were a better team than what they were last year. Now, did that mean they'd get back to the state? It absolutely did not. Because anything can happen on any given night. But we like that team defensively. Questioned them offensively. And the more we saw them, that wasn't even a threat. They continue to grow. And it'll be interesting to see how they do over in Jacksonville. But one of the surprise teams, Florida High. Surprise? Why? Wasn't for talent. They have the talent. But they're babies. When you go over there with starting three sophomores and a, and a Freshman, no senior starting, bringing everybody back. And then you got eighth grader coming off the bench. You're going to 6'5". Makai Willis in the middle is about 6'7 now. They continue to grow. And they're playing against um, one of Charlie Ward, who is the new coach at Florida High, playing against one of his old teammates from Florida State University, James Collins, who himself is a legend over in Jacksonville. They're going against each other, and they go 6'7", 6'6", 6'6", 6'6", 6'5", with young talent. So these two teams are going to have to pass by each other for a while to get to the state. So once again, Tallahassee basketball, <laughs> as bright as it is today, Whoa, behind the back. Be even brighter tomorrow. Same thing, going to go behind the back again. We won't, even, we won't even mention how good some of the basketball leagues that Insights was able to cover on the Special Olympics. But that, that whistle, nobody heard it. Rickards and Leon playing. Both of them going to the state in the Special, in the special Olympics. Basketball, if you a Hooper fan, 
And we got a little coaching it. going on. That's going to be about it. So we they starting to run out of gas a little bit, it yeah. looks like. Go to the subscribe button. Leon hasn't been able to score. In fact, they have not scored the since the so second quarter. The They've not scored this half. They had a 13-11 halftime lead. To bring these Rick is rolling away team. now. Marquis Rollins with a layup. Right in the city. But you know, these live 21 13. Whoa! 10 unanswered points by Rickards. Why? Wow. It's insights. High school Behind game of the week. Back. He's doing Splits a special the trap. edition here. He beat three people, boy. That's he hadn't ball. missed over there yet. I'm Mickey Clayton, the coach. Yeah. Tyrese Moon knocks it down here. Insight, Insight Sports, Talk. Sports Talk. One, two, talk, yes, talk. Insight, Insight Sports, Talk. Sports Talk. Traveling the country for the biggest stories in collegiate sports. Bringing you the news that will impact every college athlete in America. From the Ivy League to the SWAC, Big Sky to the Big Ten, Notre Dame, FAMU, Miami or Maine. No university is too big, no college too small. We tell it all. Inside Sports Talk with your hosts, the coach, Mickey Clayton and Clayton Smith. They're bringing you insight on all the latest stories from all the biggest names in collegiate sports. Join us for the next 60 minutes for Inside Sports Talk. The sports talk show, the sports talk show of a different kind.